uh, in the school of teaching for the learned is there to perfect us, to make us more like Christ. Amen? We're going to go to a few Psalms just for a second and get a good understanding. We're going to do the Gospels itself, read the Gospels itself, and we're going to see what Jesus had to say himself. Amen? Psalms 94. Psalms 94, verse 11. So where we might think that we're escaping men and then it's over with, we are not going to escape the most high. As the old saying goes, as we country folks say, ain't nobody going to get by. That's proper English. Hallelujah. Now you think about it. How many times have you ever deceived people with your thoughts? All right. You see, this is kingdom perfecting. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man. What does he know of man? The thoughts of man. Did y'all hear that? He knows the thoughts of man. Isn't that something? I mean, over and over again, we, we, the scriptures often pop up in our mind. You know, by your words, you're justified, and by your words, you're condemned. And we capitalize on that, but we... We, we hardly ever hear messages centered on the, the communication of the spirit. What is really going on? The Lord knows the thoughts of man that they are vanity. Y'all hearing that? They are vanity. Drop on down to verse 19. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, Thy comforts delights, delight my soul. Did y'all hear that? So there's a way you can even um, experience joy, comfort, and pleasure. But it, you have to get control of that inward man. Come on, sometimes we let that inward man just run unchecked. We don't put him through any checks and balances. We're, we're busy trying to clean up the outside and get the aura from the outside to, to so everybody can see, so look at me, look how holy and everything I am. But the, the real you is the inner man. Yes. Amen. That's the real you. Amen. I understand you want to take care of this body, but if you put half a much attention in taking care of the inward man as you did the outward man, we'd be something. We'd be a holy generation, wouldn't we? We'd be a royal priesthood, would we not? Oh, yes, we would, too. Oh, yes, we would. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't believe how much time and effort and energy we put into um, grooming ourselves. I wonder what that inward man looks like. I wonder how much cleaning he's had. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Makes sense, don't it? Psalms 119, verse 113. So, you see... We're going to shift the tide to the spirit. Hallelujah. Because we don't want to present um, our soul before the king dirty. You know, we hear it all the time. We pray. You know, I don't know what the scripture says. Lord, let your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord. And since we're in this natural realm, what well, we spend the most time perfecting and working on? Body. And the spirit man is neglected. Now we don't neglect the soul man. We just capitalize on the wrong emotions of the soul man. <laughs> you know the wrong manifestations of the soul man. You know what I mean? I mean if the soul man can, can uh, be angry and upset and all this other stuff. Then surely you can control that soul man and, and, and rejoice in the Lord, or praise his holy name. Amen. But see, the difference in the dynamic is, is that when you're angry and stuff, you think it's, it's really originating and coming just only from your free will when you're really being controlled. Because remember, the scripture says, anger rests in the bosom. Where's the bosom at then? Of fools. Isn't that something? So if you got manifestations of anger and stuff and yet you're expressing that, but then when, I mean, the, the most highs do all praise, yeah. all glory, and all honor. Yeah. But see, that right there, it doesn't come by how you feel. It comes, it comes by your free will to.
to do it. And once you do it, then, then, you know, as old saying, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. See, it takes an active knowledge of your will. You can't wait till you feel like praising. You never wait till you feel like you're angry, do you? You're responding on impulse. Wow. Are you not? Listen to the book. Shalomak, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Did y'all hear that? I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Is that not something? We're going, we're going, we're going, let's tell you what, let's turn over here to Isaiah, the eighth chapter for a second. Verse 16. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Isn't that something? Bind up the testimony and seal the law amongst my disciples. Isn't that beautiful? Huh? I, 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 anyway, just, hey, just go on. Then you go on down 20 verse to the law and to the testimony. You know, if you're not lawful, then you're lawless. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Now let's go over here to Matthew, the ninth chapter. We're going to get over here in the new covenant here just for a second. So, hey, while I'm here, I'm going I'm to talk about this for a second. You know, we seal two ways. We seal two ways yet in one. You know, we're sealed um, with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, right? And then we just got finished reading again how we're sealed by the law. Now, how are they synonymous one to another? Well, those of us who understand God's timetable, is that right? We understand that on the Feast of Pentecost, that's when God gave his law. And then when the day of Pentecost came, that's when his, he poured out his Holy Spirit. Two different time frames, same spirit. And both of them are the law. Hallelujah. Well, you know, the children of Israel, um, they journeyed and they went into the wilderness of Sinai and they received the law on the day of Pentecost at the foot of Mount Sinai. So that's the reason why Christianity can't understand our heritage. They can't, you know, they, it, it's impossible because they're coming from a wrong perspective. You know, you'll be surprised when you look at this book from the perspective that it presents to you, your whole opinion and ideal of everything, it changes. You know why? Because you have changed perspectives. So if you come from the perspective of what God has chosen from the beginning, then it changes your whole understanding, your whole perspective about what you thought you knew about him. And then you begin to learn him. Hallelujah. 